Truck drivers, what's a creepy story you've got from the middle of nowhere? Like and subscribe or I'll haunt you tonight. I worked at the Nevada nuclear test site, decommissioning old buildings. One of the creepiest days was when I was sent with an end dump load of non-hazmat material to the general landfill which I had never been to before. Somehow, I missed the turn and ended up at an armed gate with machine guns pointed at me, very uncomfortable. Once I explained my mistake, I was quite hastily turned around. Still not knowing exactly where my turn was, a very nondescript desert road was what I was looking for, I headed back. I turned on the next dirt road I came to and ended up at the sedan crater. Went and smoked a cigarette on the observation deck all by my lonesome. My hands were still shaking from the run-in with the armed guards. Another was was when delivering a hazmat load to area 25, they had begun using robots to guard the area. They were still in beta testing and someone may have just been messing with me, but the damn thing perceived my truck as a threat and blocked my ability to move. I went inside the building and 15 minutes later, it had moved on. I've got a few, being stalked by my gut says a skin walker outside of Cedar City. One of the worst was when I was parked at a dirt turnout in the Arizona desert between Cameron and Page for the night. This is out in Navajo country I believe. About 2 AM, I woke up to scratching at the window of my sleeper, went on for about 15 minutes, I'm sitting there in the dark scared to death wondering what the hell is happening with my bowie knife in my hand. After it ended, I waited another 15 minutes or so before I opened my curtain and looked out the windows, couldn't see anything outside and I was still the only one parked there. Got out the next morning and all I found were some footprints coming to the truck and eventually walking back into the desert. Haven't parked there since, I always stop at a small truck stop in Cameron now. Not a truck driver, but once I was driving through the Canadian Rockies late at night and had just passed through a small town. So I'm driving through the pitch black and I need to stop to pee and have a smoke. But because it's so dark, I miss the last rest stop for the next while. No problem, the highway is completely deserted. So I pull to the side of the road, have my pee while staring out into the dark and then light up a cigarette and stand by my car. As I'm standing there, I see the figure of a man just walking out of the tree line. I'm miles from civilization, patchy cell service, and there isn't a soul on the road. I thought my eyes were playing tricks on me and maybe it was a deer, but nope this was a man. So I calmly walk back to the driver's door and get in, locking the doors behind me. I'm keeping my eye on this guy as I nervously smoke and have my car in drive, ready to peel out, but for some reason, I just stayed put. The guy walks right up to my passenger door and knocks on the window. I crack the window and I ask what's up. He replies to me in a very very serious tone, I need you to call the cops. I cautiously ask why and he tells me he had gone out into the woods to kill himself, but he couldn't go through with it because he had thought of his daughters right before he was about to do it. I call the cops while the guy quietly cries outside. He had a kitchen knife that he was gonna use on himself, so I stayed in the car and advised him to maybe leave the knife on the ground before the cops arrived. The cops came and got him but before they left with him, I gave him a solid heart to heart and wished him well. I still think about him, I hope he was able to turn things around. Not me, but an ex-girlfriend's cousin's uncle, yeah, I know it's a friend of a friend situation, but it was a well-known tale among the family. He was driving on a Mexican road at night. He felt a call of nature, so he parked on the sideway and jumped off the truck. He walked to relief himself and while doing that he felt a presence beside him. He pointed his flashlight at his side and saw, standing besides him, a small deformed person. It was naked and had both its head and face bloated, and he was standing just there. The driver, ex-girlfriend's cousin's uncle, ran away to his truck, jumped in, and drove away from there. There's been a lot since I talked with my ex, we're cool but not too much in touch. Not me, but my Costa Rican tour guide told us a really scary story that happened to a former employee of his who would drive a truck carrying construction-related stuff to different sites. Mind you, where they were building was miles away from the nearest city, a lot of Costa Rica is preserved jungle. Luckily the government is environmentally conscious and isn't just cutting everything down like Brazil is now. Anyway, this dude was the first, not the only, to have this happen to him. Apparently when he was driving behind a line of construction trucks on their way to the site late at night. He saw a white pale woman throw herself in the way of the trucks in front of him. 
He yelled it into their radio to stop and check for her, but when they stopped, they didn't find a body or blood, and no one saw her except him. This happened again on the same trip and yet again, when they stopped, they couldn't find the girl and no one except the guy who called it saw anything. The other workers thought he was high or something. One other time, he had to go out to the site by himself at night. It had been some time after the incident with the pale woman, so he didn't think it was a big deal. He exited the car at one point to take a leak near a clearing and that's when he felt it started to get really cold. He turned around and peering out from a tree in the distance he saw the same pale woman staring at him. Dude booked it back to his car and got in the driver's seat, turned it on, and was about to speed the hell out when he took one last look at his left side rear view mirror, and saw her much closer and still looking at him. He kept that story to himself thinking no one would believe him until a new worker claimed to see the same thing and told my tour guide, their boss. When the boss told the truck driver what the new guy saw, the truck driver told him about the second encounter with the woman in the forest. Creepy stuff. Well it was creepy at first. I pull into a Purdue plant, drop my empty trailer a go park where they allow bobtails to sit, right next to a nice little pond. My pickup was in 12 hours, so I do my PTI and lay down in the bunk. At about 3 AM, I hear something tapping on my passenger side door. I get up, look out the window expecting to see someone, maybe a driver asking for a lumper check, but no one's there. It may be I'm hearing things, so I go back to lay down. As soon as my head hits the pillow, I hear the tapping again except this time it's on my driver's side. Same thing as before, I jump up and look out my window, but nothing's there. Double lock my doors just in case and open my side hatches, so I can hear what's going on outside. After about 15 minutes, I hear a very light splat 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 going along the driver's side of the truck. I slowly get up planning to look out my window at the exact moment whoever it is knocks on my door. And then I hear a thud coming from the roof of the cab. I stop grab my tire thumper off its hook and ready myself for whatever the hell is going on. Then a freaking goose falls off the top of the truck and lands on my hood. It stands up, waddles back and forth and looks at me. As we make eye contact, the tapping at my door starts again. I say dang it and throw open the driver's side door and there's another damn goose waddling away with all the speed it can manage honking like a five-year-old who just found the horn on his new bike. The pond I parked next to had a ton of them just dicking around. Needless to say, it was hard to sleep that night because every couple minutes, the damn geese would peck at my door or land on the cab and waddle around. Parked off an exit ramp at about 3 am for my 10 hour. The moon was full and high, and I spotted an unmistakably human figure in a nearby cut corn field. A little spooky, but I just wrote it off as an old timer putting up a scarecrow for the grandkids. Started watching a few YouTube videos before turning in and out the corner of my vision I though I saw movement. I shut my lights off to get a good look, saw the figure, but nothing else. I couldn't be sure, but it looked like maybe it was in a different spot, maybe a little closer even. I was definitely feeling a bit spooked. Highway was devoid of anyone besides a car passing every 10 minutes or so. I didn't want to, but I had to jump out to pee. I considered a bottle, but I told myself I was being childish. I took a look at the figure and it was right where I figured it should be. I hop out, walk between my truck and trailer and start leaking. Every fiber of my being wanted to look. I told myself again I was being foolish, but I couldn't help it. I looked out, the field was empty the figure wasn't there. My stomach dropped, I pinched off and jumped back in. I took off down the highway, didn't give one thing about a violation. Stopped 40 minutes up the road at a well lit and very full loves. Haven't stopped on a ramp since. Reno, Nevada, a place on the north side of town, way off the freeway towards an old military road. I got there early at like 1 AM, they didn't open till 6 AM. The facility was closed, so no one around and I just pulled into the lot and parked off to the side. So I went to sleep and was woken shortly after to someone knocking on the door and window, firmly to the point the truck shook. I jump out of bed thinking they are there already and want to offload me early. I get to the door and no one is there, so I step down thinking they are behind the trailer looking at the door seal or something. No one around, I look under the truck and around, absolutely no one. No wind or bad weather, not another person around. I jump in the truck and pull out of there as fast as I could and went and parked in a nearby truck stop. Still can't explain it, I mean I guess I can justify I could have imagined the sound. But the truck shaking was definitely real, so I don't know. 
A few years back, I was driving home after a shift. It was 3 or 4 a.m., and I was tired but not exhausted. It's a deserted state route in the middle of nowhere, and it's pretty common not to see a single car during the 30-mile trip. I drive this road multiple times a week. It's mostly open fields and some farmland through this 30-mile stretch. This particular night it was cold, but the sky was clear. Like no clouds or anything, and I actually love nights like this because you can see the stars so well without light pollution. Anyway about halfway back home, I come over this hill to a 2 or 3 mile straight stretch. A huge dark object about the length of a pickup truck, but far rounder and thicker catches my attention as it's just hovering about 50 feet in the air, 50 or 60 feet off the road over a farm field. There's a very bright red light coming out of the side or bottom. I couldn't tell exactly where it originated from because it was so bright. As I was going about 50 miles per hour past it, I only had a few seconds to look at it, but the image is burned into my mind. I have no idea what it was, I wanted to turn around, but I was kinda freaked out. I'm sure alien life exists somewhere, but as for visiting our planet, I don't know. But if I ever had to paint a picture of what I think a UFO could look like, I'd paint whatever the hell I saw that night. Unfortunately, I haven't seen anything odd over that area since that night. I'm also not a truck driver, but I do drive 5 hours one way to work. My shift gets out at 11.30pm, so if I've got a second wind, I can usually make it the whole way home. Sometimes, I have to stop to nap. So, I recall getting tired shortly before Binghamton, which from work to Binghamton proper is about one and a half hours. This exit with the gas station I stop at frequently is about 15 minutes before this. Anyway, I stop, gas up, buy my snacks and smokes, and put up a sign in my window saying, I'm okay, I just have 4 more hours of driving to do, please don't knock. I've had that happen countless times, and if I'm really out, people think I'm dead and call the cops. Then I have to convince the cops that I just worked 32 hours with about 4 hours of sleep, not nodding out on heroin or whatever. God bless the people for thinking they're helping, and I don't want them to stop, and I push the seat back to nap. I have an alarm set for 20 minutes, this is about 1 AM. Next thing I know, it's 6.30 AM, and I'm on some back road with houses, but also fields, and I'm driving super slowly. I have no idea where I am, and how I came to be here. I don't have a lot of service bars, but I plug in my mom's address and hope directions pop up. It does, and it takes me to a highway entrance in Harpersville, New York. Okay, in about 20 minutes, I'm back on track. I don't recall how long before this story happened, but I had gotten into an accident falling asleep at the wheel. Totaled my car, got a nice eyebrow scar and nosebleed, back more messed up than it had been, but otherwise okay, got messed by my insurance too. But then this happens, and it scared the hell out of me. Assuming I woke up to my alarm, it would have been like 1.30 a.m., and I came to about 6.30 a.m. What the hell was I doing for 5 hours? How did I not hit anything, checked out the car, it was fine. How was I driving the speed limit, because I imagine any faster or slower would have gotten the cops on me, just how? Or was I asleep the whole time but still slept drove about 25 minutes until I really woke up? The terror allowed me to complete the drive. Not a truck driver, but years ago, I was driving with my ex-girlfriend back from a wedding in northern Wisconsin heading towards Madison where she lived. We were probably like 20 or 30 miles away from the city at that point and it was probably around 1 AM. My GPS, which was some really cheap brand that my dad got me as a gift from Radio Shack, had me going through some backcountry highways for some reason after I had stopped for gas instead of getting me back on the expressway right away. I didn't mind, I kind of always found those really peaceful, even though at night they are pretty creepy. My girlfriend was asleep in passenger seat, so I had turned down the music really quiet to not wake her, which added a bit to the eeriness of it all. I'm like really into this groove of driving, focused on the roads because it was, so dark without streetlights everywhere. Then, something on the side of the road catches my eye. It was a giant mountain lion, with what appeared to be blood all over its face. I start shaking my girlfriend awake to get her to see it before it was gone, but she woke up too late. I pulled over to the side of the road and asked her to watch the rear view, so she could see this huge thing cross the road, but it never did. She was convinced that I imagined it all because that area of Wisconsin is not known for mountain lions, but I swear I saw it. Driving from Spokane Washington State to Omaha Nevada, 
was cruising down Highway 212 in the middle of the night in southern Montana. About 2 a.m., I'm pulling through the only town. Lame Deer Mountain maybe, I've tried to find it on a map since, but can't be certain, on that lonely stretch of highway. One stoplight town, and I get stopped at the only red light. Hadn't seen a vehicle on the road since I had hopped off I-90 about an hour prior, and there wasn't a single person outside in the town. Sitting at that red light a loud siren or alarm starts sounding. Loud enough that I don't see how any person in the town or within a few miles could have slept through it. It reminded me of the siren from the movie Silent Hill. I gunned it through the red light and away from that town as fast as my little four-cylinder Malibu would go. It may not seem that crazy, but just imagine the most haunting sound you've ever heard, in a place you've never been, several hours separated from seeing a person last. I'm sure there's an innocent explanation for the siren, but it still sends chills down my spine just thinking of it. Not truck driving and not tired hallucinations. I had three friends helping me around midnight one night get a big toolbox into a storage unit before I could pieces to Texas. After, I offered to take them to Waffle House for food as payment since it was about the only place open at the time. We left the unit around 2 a.m. and made our way to the Waffle House, driving through the Chickamauga battlefield in Georgia to get to it. The place is terrifying to drive through on a regular night but my friend, and I thought we would have some fun with the other two who didn't grow up in the area. They didn't know any of the ghost stories of the park, so we told them some while we were driving to kind of spook them a bit. Ghosts on the sides of the road, green eyes the mysterious ghostly panther creature, the hill your car will roll up when off, rear view mirror ghosts, the works. We took a turn down a side road that leads to an old bridge that has the old stop and turn your engine off and it won't turn back on story. We get to the bridge, stop, and turn off the engine, sit for a minute, start it up, and kept driving with no problems. Nothing happened, just some harmless college kid fun. We drive over it and go around a corner and standing in a ditch is a black mass just larger than a man. It doesn't move really and even though the headlights panned across it directly, none of us can tell what it is, it's just black. All four of us screamed and I gassed it out of there, nearly sliding in a ditch to get away. All of us saw it and none of us could explain what it was and still have no idea two years later. Driving home through what could be considered the outskirts of town, a young woman ran through the street waving at me and yelling something. She was wearing nothing but a t-shirt and panties. There's a lot of homeless people in that area, and a lot of meth in my town, so I just kept going. It's fairly common for women to flag a car down and distract them while a bunch of guys scramble out of the bushes to mess you up and take your car. About a mile down the road, I realized she didn't really look homeless. I felt guilty for not stopping and the ethical thing to do was risk the car jacking for the possibility the woman was in danger. Crazy people shouldn't turn everyone else into crazy people with fear. The woman was gone, I only passed one car when I flipped around, a blue 99's Toyota. There are no stores or houses, just sand, dirt, rocks, brush. Later that night, it occurred to me that she may have been running from the man in the blue Toyota. I hope she was a car jacker. Used to do deliveries, not actually a truck driver though. I used to have this regular that was out in the boondocks, 25 plus meters out of the way of civilization and smack dab in the middle of two large towns. I would drive this route maybe once a month, and would always pass at least one car driving towards me due to the sheer length of the drive. There was a small group of old houses on this route that were really broken down and I had never seen anyone around them in 6 plus months of driving the route. Always assumed they were vacant because they didn't look livable. Well, I was driving out to this customer one fall afternoon. Had been driving for a very long time without seeing a single car drive towards me. Finally drive past the abandoned houses, and there's one old lady in her front yard pushing an old manual grass cutter, but she stops in her tracks as I drive towards her. I took it as a sign I was speeding or something and slow down. I take a quick glance in my rear view mirror after passing by, and she was staring straight at me. She dropped the grass cutter and turned 180 degree to do this. It was just very odd and definitely set off my spidey sense. Never saw her again or anyone else on that route by those houses in the 10 months I drove it. 